Hey, this is Daryl as a service and modern work mentor. I've got six tips for working with Microsoft Teams files that I think you really should know. And this includes some of the updates and advancements that simplify working with Microsoft Teams files. Something we have to do every day. So starting off with, my first tip is to upload files to your Teams before you attach them to a conversation. Let's have a look how it should be done to begin with. Here in a team, I'm asking Laura to to check out a document and go through a process of building the site for me. So I'm going to upload the file that I want to actually get it to work on and I'm going to pop it into, let's say, campaign assets. Upload that, upload the file from my machine. It's just a Word document and up it goes. Now this means that I'm able to put the file where I want it and it's going to be nice and tidy and easy to access. Uh, let's go back here. All right, so now I've got some folders, I've got some files there that I could be working with, and we'll go back to our conversation. Let's attach the file to the conversation, and rather than uploading from my computer, I'm going to choose Browse Teams and Channels. And we'll go into our Campaign Assets folder where I uploaded the document, select it, and then choose share a link because we want to point people to where the document is. We don't need to upload it again. There it is, attached to the conversation. Easy peasy. Now what do we do if we are trying to do this quickly and we don't want to think too much about where the file will go? The bad habit is we often just attach the file, upload it from our computer, and send it into the conversation. And so what happens with this is it piles up a whole lot of files in this top level of our channel files. Now that's fine right now because there's not too many uh, documents there, but as the conversation continues, as the, the collaboration continues in this channel, it can get very messy. So tip number one, upload your files before you attach them to your conversation and then add a link to it. Cool. Second one, if you're going to be using a, a team and a folder uh, quite frequently from uh, Microsoft Teams, how about making it easy for you to work on it from your computer? We're going to add a OneDrive shortcut to this folder. Now, this is a team called Marketing. It is a channel called Product Launch. And uh, what we do within Teams to add a shortcut to this channel and folders is that we visit the channel to begin with. We make sure that we're in the folder that we want to add a shortcut to. Or in this case, I want to add a shortcut to the whole channel. So I'm going to uh, use the toolbar menu, the three dots, and I'll choose to add a shortcut to OneDrive. So that happens in the background. It will create a shortcut which I can use wherever I use OneDrive. So let's have a look at OneDrive on the web browser to begin with. Okay, so I am in OneDrive. I'm looking at my files. And if I just refresh the page, then we should be able to find a folder named after the channel that we worked with. So here it is, it's called Product Launch. And note here that uh, in the column at the very end, who is the owner of this folder? It is the team, the marketing team. So now I can go in, I can see the files and folders that are available there and easily access them. Um, one tip you might want to do is you could rename that folder so that the shortcut can appear at the top of the list. You'll see that I've done that up here and it makes it easy for me to see where that folder has come from and also that it is a shortcut. All right, so that's what it looks like in our web browser. Let's take a look at what it looks like in Files Explorer on our computers. So this is Windows Explorer and uh, within my OneDrive, uh, I'm looking at all the folders available and here it is, the product launch folder. Open up that, same list of folders and files 
Uh, and now that we're looking at it from a machine, uh, from a computer, then I can see that these are files that are still stored in the cloud. And if I want to work on a file, then I can just double click to open it and OneDrive's on-demand feature will bring it down to my machine and I can work on it locally. It will keep the document in synchronization and any changes will go back up to the team where the rest of the team can benefit from those changes and co-author with me. So that's what it looks like on Windows. What does it look like on a Mac? All right, so instead of Windows Explorer, we're using Finder this time. And we're in my OneDrive. Let's have a look at, there it is, the product launch folder. And so that is, again, just like with Windows, it has created a shortcut. The documents are still in the cloud, and if I want to work on one, then I just double click on it. Down it comes and I can start working on it and keep it in synchronization. Use OneDrive shortcuts to connect to your frequently visited files and folders in the teams that you work in. Tip number three is something that I think we should all get confident in doing. Uh, now when we want to find files and work with files, sometimes we're doing this from within an Office application like Microsoft Word. And so within Microsoft Word, uh, we might want to find the files within the teams that we work in. Uh, so this time we're going to look at a team called uh, the Early Adopters, and we're working with files in team learning. Now, I might be in Microsoft Word, and let's say that I've opened it up and I want to start working on a file. I can see the recent files that I've been working on, but what if it's something new? Uh, so I can open up uh, the other locations that I'm storing files. And I want us to get confident with this area here, the different sites that we are a member of. When we're a member of a team, the team has a site behind it that stores our files. And so we'll find in this list here that I frequently go to early adopters. Let's open up the site. And at this level, we can see there's a document library called documents. That's the container for where the documents are stored in our team. We open that, and now we see a couple of familiar folders or names. Firstly, the general channel. A team will always have a folder there for files in the general channel. And here is our team learning channel. We'll go into our build documents, and there's the file that I want to work on. I can open that up, and away we go. Um, I'm working on files from within my Microsoft team. So you see how easy that is. Now if we went into other kinds of teams uh, and open up those documents, we might see slightly different files and folder structures. Uh, let's go into the way we work, for example, and into documents. More channels, more folders to work in, but we can navigate through to the sites that we have our files and find them there. And once we have them open, then they're easier to find in recent. And if it's something that we're working on uh, quite frequently, uh, then it might be a good idea to pin that file uh, to your Office application. So that's tip number three, to learn and get confident with navigating to our files from within a Microsoft application. Now what about moving and copying files around our teams? Now this is, um, something that had improved, it's starting to look more consistent across the places that we work with files in Microsoft 365. And this has come to Teams. Let's again take a look at our marketing uh, team and go into product launch. Now I'm going to go into files and I want to try and move some files around. Well, here's one thing that's really quite uh, handy that I can drag and drop something into, let's say, project plan, for example. Drag and drop, very cool. Uh, but what about taking a number of files and maybe copying or moving them to a different team or a different channel? Uh, so let's take a look at that one and maybe this one here. So I've selected my files that I want to move or choose to move this time. I'll use the toolbar and choose move to. Now here's what's changed. Here, we're starting to get a familiar experience that we also see within OneDrive and we'll begin to see within other Office applications. Uh, we can see a breadcrumb or trail through to the different layers of folders and files within the marketing team. We can see the current uh, 
uh, folder that I'm in. And because I'm moving files, I, I need to find a new location. I can't just move them to the same location. Over on the left hand side, I see some of the teams and sites that I frequently go to. And so I'm going to shift this to a different team. I'm going to choose to shift it to the early adopters team. So we're clicking through to there. We can see our files and our folders. And here's a, a view that we start to need to make sense of. Um, we have two ways of looking at the folders within a team. First of all, uh, the site behind the team uh, has folders here called general and team learning, but it might also have some other folders that I've created if I've worked on the site. Um, whereas if I wanna just see the channels and the channel names, um, then I can expand this list here and I can see just those channels. There's something extra there isn't there for this team. Uh, I also have a shared channel that's connected to my team. So it allows me to go through and I can uh, work with files within that shared channel. So I'm still choosing where to copy these files. I'm gonna just drop them in team learning and we'll click move here. All right, so the file, the folder contains properties that will be lost during the destination. Now that's just something that I've added some extra metadata and tags on there, so I'm just gonna to choose to move them anyway, and that's fine. And so those files will go over to that library, and we'll do the same for that other one. And there you go, job done. So get familiar with uh, using the uh, move or the copy feature to be able to move or copy those files around. And you see that it's uh, much easier to use now. There's something else too about sharing files. And this is a uh, tip number one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. <laughs> Where um, sometimes we just go with the defaults. We want to share a file with someone and uh, try and, you know, make it, make it easy. Um, so let's just look at this file called memo and look at our sharing options. In my organization, we get this sharing box that comes up, sharing window, and I can choose uh, who or the what type of link that I'm going to create. Do I wanna just uh, allow or share it with everyone across my organization and allow them to edit? Do I wanna allow anyone, and in this case, I've turned it off for this. Um, how about people with existing access? Um, and lastly, specific people. The tip I want to share here is that often when we want to share a file with uh, people in our team, we want to draw their attention to it, then sometimes we are, we're not really thinking about what we choose and we just leave it as people within my organization. When really they already have access because they're uh, within our team. So I want you to encourage you to do this. When you share a file with a team member, uh, that you can choose people with existing access and then just copy that link. Okay, so that means that if I go back over here and create a post for Laura, um, at Laura, this was the file. Okay. It already has uh, the permissions and, and the link that I've just chosen. Now there are quick ways to do this too. If I just grab a link to the document, you can see that even here before I post the, uh, the conversation to Laura, I have the opportunity to, uh, to change the permissions on that link. And there's a new one here too. Um, so we have people with existing access, we have people in my organization, but maybe I just wanna make sure that it doesn't go any further than the marketing team. So I can choose that option as well. Uh, let's send that off. So no need to set, to create a brand new link that goes off to uh, to allow anyone in the organization to open that file. Choose to share it with people who already have access. And lastly, um, something that's popped up when we are moving and copying files around. Maybe I should have showed it beforehand. Let's just step through some of these uh, steps. This last tip is about making sure that the files are still shared with the people that already have access. So this time I'm going to copy some files to a different team and then we'll have a look at that option. We'll go into uh, our list of files and folders and we'll shift this one called Project Delta and we will 
move it to, let's say, the early adopters team again. Now what I want to draw your attention to is this option down here. Keep sharing with the same people. So if we go into the folder that I want to save it to, then this option ensures that if you already had access to this file, then you will still have access to it in the new location. And that's important because people will still be working on it. And sometimes when we move files and folders around, uh, then all of a sudden the access is broken and people can't continue to work on it. And it causes us to slow down and, and have issues. So we'll tick that box, move that there. And so not only is it also uh, creating that or moving that file over to the new location, but it's going to share it with people who might not have access to this location. They'll still be able to access the file, but they won't necessarily be able to access the team and everything else in it. So this will be good. We'll be able to continue to collaborate on it together. Brilliant. So those are the six tips I have for you around working with files in Microsoft Teams. I'm sure there are more, and feel free to tell me about them in the comments below. We'll also keep an eye out for some of the changes around working with files in Microsoft Teams because that's a frequent activity that we have to um, carry out when we're working together as a team. If you found these tips useful, then definitely subscribe to this channel, give this video a like, and um, continue to look out for other things and other tips uh, around Microsoft 365. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.